check it out. We're like almost into the middle of May. And the sounds of summer are upon us. Alright, so before we start this video off, let's have a little bit of fun. So, just a little context here. Okay, while I was in there filming that, the buying of the Malorganite and everything, um, I was in there, right, and I was wearing a green sweatshirt, which, as you guys know, who've been to Allsip before, that's kind of Allsip's um, corporate color, right? So when you're walking around, you kind of see, you, you see all the employees, right, wearing green sweatshirts or anything like that. So, I'm in there wearing my green John Deere sweatshirt, Right? I don't know if any of the customers were able to tell that it was a John Deere sweatshirt, but I had like a couple people come up to me asking, Hey, sir, can you direct me in the direction of a product for my plants? Can you help me with something like that? Um, I don't work here, sorry. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much. No problem. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. And as you can see, I actually got back from a job here. You can see the equipment. I got to unload it. And been getting very busy. And you know what? It's been a while. Anyway, for all seriousness, let's get back to today's topic. I'm actually going to show you how to spray and kill weeds today. So believe it or not, I've actually been wanting to do this video for quite a while. I just haven't been having the most appropriate conditions you should be having whenever you should be spraying a liquid herbicide. Number one being you want to make sure there's no rain in the forecast which again is stuff that these weed materials just love and number two you want to make sure that you have winds five miles per hour or lower if you can look for a no windy day when is the best time to spray the best time to spray is when the nighttime temperatures hit about 45 degrees or higher another way to look at that by eye is just to check for the dandelions main bloom kind of like you see right here once they're in full bloom you're good to go the reason we don't want to spray when it's too cold is because there's certain labels on the herbicide right they say that you need to spray at a certain temperature in order for it to work otherwise you spray it's too cold it's not gonna work. Should I cut my lawn before I spray weeds? The first case scenario is that you're mowing your lawn weekly, right? And it grows just a little bit, it's not overgrown, but you're still at a point where you can contact the leaf surface. Then at that point, you don't need to cut it. The second case scenario is that you haven't been able to mow your lawn for a few weeks and it is severely overgrown to a point where all the leaf material of the weeds is being shaded out. This is the case where you're gonna wanna cut the lawn at least. If you are, be sure to mow tall and bag because the key here with spraying weeds is we want to have the most leaf surface available for the liquid to contact that way it'll kill the weed dead on don't you guys just love that term dead on dead on but in my case i may have an acceptable height here but i'm probably not going to be able to spray for another few days because i'm actually going to be busy mowing some lawns for my lawn business and that's another thing guys you also want to look at the weather and when you can do it because this week's kind of tight man i mean we only got monday tuesday wednesday and then thursday we're supposed to get a downpour you want to have 24 hours with no rain at a minimum 48 hours is even better For those of you who have been following along, remember that about a month prior to this step right here, 
we put down starter for it to give that lawn that extra boost that it really needed. Now that we're back on track, we're going to be applying Melorganite at 15 pounds per 1,000 square feet, which is going to deliver us about three quarter pound of nitrogen. And you guys happen to know that I like Melorganite because it contains iron, which gives me that dark blue green look that sets me apart. And by the way, just in case you're wondering, that blue-green color, that's two years of Melorganite right there. So when it comes to spraying weeds in my lawn, I like to practice a system known as IPM, Integrated Pest Management. Basically what that means is whenever I treat a pest in my lawn, I like to use the least chemical means possible to back them down and get rid of them. In this case, the weeds in my lawn are out of control, so I'm going to have to use a pesticide to back them down. In addition to that, Integrated Pest Management says that if you're going to use a pesticide, make sure you're using it in a way that minimally impacts the environment. If we're going to do that, spot spraying weeds using a pump sprayer. Let's think of it this way. We may have weeds in this lawn, but they're not everywhere. The materials we're going to need are, number one, a hand can sprayer. I typically prefer a one gallon sprayer if you're in the same case I am, which is about 5,000 square feet of lawn area. Anything bigger, you might want to consider a larger sprayer. Other than that, I also believe since it is one gallon, it'll simplify the task of mixing on a per gallon basis, which is perfect for any beginner when it comes to spraying weeds. Secondly, we want to make sure we're using the fan tip nozzle. Reason being, we want to have a fine mist to ensure even coverage on top of the weed. Notice how my sprayer puts out a nice mist as I walk across the lawn? That's the fan tip nozzle and that's going to be the key to our success as you'll see later on. Next you're going to need your liquid weed control. When selecting a weed control, keep in mind it's not the brand that matters, it's the active ingredients that make all the difference. The first ingredient we want to look for is 2,4-D. It kind of looks like 2,4-D. This is the quickest option for controlling broadleaf weeds such as dandelions and clover. The second ingredient is conchloric, which is meant to control crabgrass, but only to a certain extent. What I mean by that is it'll only control crabgrass until it passes the second tiller stage. It's also very important to ensure our herbicide is selective. If not, it's sudden death for our turf crop. All right. All right, so I'm in the middle of applying uh, my weed control to the yard over here, and my neighbor Megan came out, right? And so, Megan, tell me what you did here, all right? I, so just, I sprayed my dandelions. You sprayed your dandelions. And then I looked at the bottle, and it said weed and grass. Right. Here. So I sprayed the grass. So this kind of teaches the audience a little lesson here. When you're going to get your weed control, it's very important that you look for the one that's selective, meaning it only kills weeds and not the grass. So I guess you learned a lesson learned. there. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Lastly, we're going to need our PPE, personal protective equipment, which in this case is long sleeves, long pants, rubber gloves, rubber boots, and eye protection. Let me just say real quick that this video is in no way, shape, or form sponsored by Solution Stores. It's just a gift, not a sponsor. I'll even put it right here. Not a sponsor. Before we spray, let's practice a little bit with some clean water. My sidewalk will represent an area of lawn and the bricks will be weeds. All you gotta do is keep the wand at knee height and walk the lawn in the grid spraying where you see weeds and not where you don't. That's all there really is to it. What you're looking at here is how we're going to take about applying our applications with the hand can. You can see I got a little drawing here so you could see my shoe here, right? And my, my hand here. And this is not really what it'll look like when we're out in the field, but it works for not being that good of a drawler. But it kind of helps us illustrate how we're gonna spray. We're gonna spray at knee height and we're just gonna walk across the lawn spraying the weeds until they are wet. But sometimes that's not always the case. I had to deal with some wind. It was literally the only opportunity I could get out there. It's like a give and take. So sometimes you're gonna have to change your method depending on the weather. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the sprayer a little bit lower to the ground and I'm gonna have to just wave it back and forth a little bit just to make sure that I'm soaking those weeds because I know that if I'm gonna have a little bit of wind, right, it's gonna maybe allow some of this chemical to drift off into areas we don't want. So in that case, the only solution in there would be to hold it lower to the ground.
<laughs> Lastly, let's talk about why we use the fan tip nozzle. We want to have a fine mist of droplets on top of the weed for a more consistent application and to allow the leaves of the broadleaf weed to absorb the weed control a lot better. Remember guys, fine mist is the key to our success when it comes to spraying weeds. Alright, so here we are just a couple weeks after application. Our main target pests, right, were mainly dandelions, clover, and a little bit of ground ivy. We got some leaf damage here. We'll be talking about improvements for weed control targeting in another video, but you can see we got some nice browning and dieback going on here. And the broadleaf weeds, you can see, we struck them. That's right. Not in my domination world. You can see killing off the weeds has really improved the look of the lawn overall because it's been a couple years since I've actually applied something for weeds and you can see, again we got a couple up there, but it just looks a lot cleaner. We already got some really good results, you can even see right here, that's good coverage, completely zorched. So there you go guys, there's everything I have to teach you about how to spray and kill weeds. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, please be sure to ask them in the comments below. With that, I'm Jake the Long Kid, thank you for watching, I'll see you guys next time.